I'm Jimmy with EarCandyTV.com, hanging out in the music room one Saturday night, and I was going to do a, two quick videos um, on parallel versus series wiring, how to do it, what the difference is, and get a little in depth with it real quick. Um, but just in a brief, if you're just trying to hook up some speakers in a cabinet, uh, parallel wiring is exactly that. If you look up the word parallel in the dictionary, it's just two set of speaker leads running in parallel with each other from the speakers to the input jack and you match your positive tab with your positive wire and your negative tab with your negative wire for both speaker leads and you have them come together in parallel at the input jack which in parallel will cut your ohm load in half so we'll hook these up real quick these are uh, two 8 ohm speakers one's at earcandycabs.com green machine and one is an eminence swamp thing uh, both are 8 ohms so we're hooking these up in parallel so that should get us a 4 ohm load when we plug our multimeter into it so we'll plug that in and see come up with 5 ohms um, so that's parallel wiring and that's how you do it now if you have an input jack on your cab and you can't tell which is the positive and which is the negative tabs whether it be switchcraft or Nutrik or whatever it doesn't matter just look at your speaker cable the, if we're talking mono speaker cables here which we are not stereo the tip is positive and the sleeve is negative or your ground so when you plug the cable into the jack just look at which tab on the jack the positive end of the speaker cable pops up and that's the positive end of the jack usually the back of the jack um, and that's how you can identify the positive and negative tabs on the speaker jack uh, now some questions that I get asked commonly uh, alright series wiring how do you hook that up let's just completely undo the parallel wiring and get rid of that there and what series wiring is it's some it's similar but you jump a wire from one speaker to the next instead of having two speaker leads in parallel you have one set of speaker leads from the input jack tabs and you take your positive to a positive on one speaker and then your other negative the only other negative to the negative on the other speaker not on the same speaker and then you take and solder a jumper wire between the two and that's what makes it go into a series which in series will double your ohm load so when we test two 8 ohm speakers in series you'll see this jump up to 16 ohms I'm saying 20 ohms I've got it set to 2000 and these have an RE of about 10 ohms a piece so that's why we're getting 5 ohms on parallel and 20 ohms on series um, which leads me to the next question that people ask me constantly um, ohms changes with frequency and in the second video we're going to address that scientifically with a computer and a speaker and show you how that happens with a graph um, but for now I'm going to show you what actually creates your ohm load uh, in your um, speaker cab and your speaker actually the cabinet has nothing to do with the ohm load it's the speaker so you got a multimeter and you've got it set to to read ohms and you hook it up to a speaker and you'll see that you will get an ohm reading right okay eight ohms so when what's causing that is this right here the voice coil of the speaker the voice coil can be found the voice coil is right underneath the dust cap and in between the dust cap and the speaker magnet. Uh, this actually floats up and down inside the speaker magnet and that's what they refer to as tolerance and, and spacing and gaps and, and more technical information like that. But your ohm load actually comes from the speaker coil itself, so the voice coil itself. Uh, so when I hook the multimeter up to this voice coil, which this is a voice coil and spider and speaker dome uh, that I extracted out of an old EVM-12L and it's still intact and we can actually test it to show you that this is where you will get the ohm load from. 
and that's a six ohm load voice coil. Uh, now a lot of people ask me, I got this big ass EV speaker and on the back of it it says 8 to 16 ohms. Well, what that means is if you test it, it's going to test at 12 ohms. It's right in the middle and you can use it for anywhere in between 8 and 16 ohms. Uh, like I said, ohms are never static. They never stay exactly at 8 or 16 or 4. Uh, they change with frequency. Um, now, a lot of people ask me, uh, is it magnet size that makes changes the ohms? No, because you've seen us test the speaker a few minutes ago, and we're going to add a magnet to it. Flip it over so the polarity matches and attracts itself. And we'll test it again, and you'll see it's still the same ohm load. And we just added, uh, we just added 29 ounces of a magnet of the same kind of uh, magnet material to the magnet. It's still 7, 8 ohms. So magnets don't change. Magnet size doesn't change the ohm load. The ohm load is strictly related to the the voice coil there. Um, now that's that's parallel series wiring and ohm loads. Uh, now people ask us all the time what the difference between 4, 8, and 16 ohms is. Now that is relative to your amplifier and the transformers in it. The transformers are the big square things in the back of your amp and the tubes are the little glass vacuum tubes which you can't see here, they're in the front part. Uh, this is a little Epiphone Valve Junior and these are Hammond transformers and you've got your 4, 8, and 16 ohm speaker outputs. Now the way this has been explained to me by several amplifier makers who really know their stuff is 4 ohms is like running your car at 90 miles an hour in 5th gear. Everything's running nice and smooth and not working too hard on the overall uh, scheme of things. 16 ohms is like running your car at 90 miles an hour in first gear. Um, the resistance is higher, things are working harder, things are running warmer. Uh, so it's been explained to me that at 4 ohms your transformers are about 30% saturated with voltage. At 16 ohms they're like 90% saturated with voltage. So they're running hotter, they're more stuffed up, and therefore your tone is actually more stuffed up. Uh, now please notice this amplifier is not plugged in and um, we do not recommend sticking your hands in, goofing around the backs of amplifiers. Um, that's real bad news and you can really hurt yourself doing that. Um, now, people ask, does wire size change ohm load? No, it actually it actually doesn't. Um, it can change what's called picohertz, but we'll get into that in a completely different video. That's cable related. So, as long as you you know you just want to use you, you obviously don't want to use something like a 22 gauge uh, alligator clips to hook your speaker your speakers up in your cabinet. You want to use something you know nice and thick that's going to let the voltage and the amplified signal flow with relatively less um, impedance or resistance. Um, so that's uh, that's the difference between parallel and series wiring. Parallel cuts your ohm load in half, series wiring doubles your ohm load. And it's really that simple and it all comes down to the voice coil. Um, how many minutes are we at there? Eight and a half. Okay. Um, another thing that I wanted to go over with everybody real quick is the difference between quarter inch and neutric combo inputs. Um, these are quarter inch inputs. They just take the standard uh, you know, quarter inch guitar speaker input just like that. That's been around since you know the beginning of electric guitar. So that's a quarter inch or you know phono input. Uh, there's some things that have been out now for several years actually um, called speak on or neutric inputs. Uh, they're, this is what the end of that cable looks like. They're airtight and they click into place and they lock. So they're a more efficient they're a more efficient plug and over in Europe these are actually what's code. And so since you can't tell uh, what is your positive and your negative on these because the cables all sealed up, if you look on the back um, and if you're if you're uh, don't have 2020 vision, you know, you can actually take a grease pencil or a piece of chalk and just rub it over top of the of the input tabs and they're usually always labeled and they'll say 1 plus 1 minus and that's how you can tell. And on to video 2 by clicking response to this video. Thanks for watching.